A good database design is a critical part of any software engineering project. I've been in situations where we completely made huge mistakes designing our database and six months down the line, it was almost impossible for us to implement new features thanks to the bad database design. In this episode, we are going to be designing the database for askusers.io, which is the user feedback SaaS application we are building throughout this series. If you're not familiar, on this channel, what we do is we take a real-world project and we build it from start to finish, from purchasing a domain right up to deploying and launching that application. If this sounds like something that would be fun for you, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're alert every time I release a new episode to this series. Also make sure you check out the previous videos so that you're all caught up. So first of all, what do you need in order to design a really good database? You need a really good understanding of the project and the future of that project. In this situation, we have a lot of examples that can tell us what this project is going to be in future. So first of all, I'll look at the competition. And if you look at the website by Kani, they have the subdomain, which is going to be for every Kani user there would be a subdomain so that they can host their company feedback, right? And I think this is awesome, but that also makes me think there is some sort of organization. So if there is an organization owned by a user, then that organization would have a subdomain, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an organizations table in my database to store these organizations. Now, what do I use to design my database? We're going to be using a nice tool called DB Diagram. And basically, this tool provides a nice way for you to design and structure your database just using text. You're not writing any SQL, you're just writing out text so that you can envision how your database is going to be at the end of the day. So, for example, if I type out this text, table, organizations, this is going to create an organizations table. And I would have an ID integer and I would make it a primary key and I would make it a primary key, make sure it's not null and make sure it increments. Now this is an organization. So if I create a new account on askusers.io, I automatically get a new organization. It would have an ID. It would also have a name. This would be of type string and this would be not null. Now I would also have a slog of type string, not null, and I would also make this unique. That way the slog is what I'm going to use for the subdomain routing. Now, like we mentioned, this organization belongs to a user, so we would need a way to track the user. But we'll get to that once we define the users table. So let's go ahead and define a table for users because we will need to save users. So we'll have table users, we we'll just copy the primary key. We we'll also save the email of the user and would we'll add a unique constraint for that email. We we'll would also have a password, would we'll be of type string, and it would be nullable. That way we can add social authentication if we need to. Now we need to link the user and the organization. Like we said, an organization would belong to a newly registered user. So we would add the user integer field would make sure it's not null and this would be a ref and if you want to have a little documentation about how to define things using the db diagram there's a really nice helpful guide that you can follow on the right panel here so in this case what we are interested in is a belongs to relationship with the users table and now if we look at the diagram it says one user, you can see one right here, has many organizations and that's what we want. And one organization would belong to one user. Now, what about inviting teammates? We want to invite other people to come and, you know, manage the feedback and we maybe we assign tasks to those teammates. So in that case, we can have a memberships table where we save the memberships for the organization. So if I have an organization, I can invite my teammates and then they join me. So I'll define a memberships table. I need a couple of things, a primary key, and a membership is going to belong to a user. So a membership 
is owned by a user so if a user is part of an organization then we need a membership to link that user and organization so we would have a user field on that membership and now you can see one user can have multiple memberships in different organizations and also we need to know the organization that this membership is tracking so we are going to have the organization field also and now you can see that a user has many memberships an organization has many memberships and the membership belongs to one organization it also belongs to one user all right so those are memberships but we need to know what is the role of this member in this organization for example if those people in the organization are just commenting and they can't access the dashboard then they are going to be normal members and if they have access to the dashboard then they are my teammates and they can see the settings and things like that so we are going to have an enum that describes the types of memberships and we will just have the member and teammates membership right here and we would have a role on each membership of type membership roles so either you're a teammate or you're just a member if you're just a member then you can just visit some ticket and comment on it but if you're a teammate then maybe you can assign that ticket edit it move it to a different status and things like that okay so now to the fun part if you visit the dashboard you will notice that there are boards so there's the features board there's the box board and these boards belong to the tensei organization so we are going to define the table called boards and it just has a name and emoji field because we are going to use emojis for the boards so that's not boring and finally the organization that it belongs to next we need to have posts so i'm going to have a table called posts and this table is going to have a bunch of fields and it's going to have an id a title and it's going to belong to a board and if we come back to our canny organization you notice that if we visit a board we have posts in that board and we can also add new posts for that board now this post is what we are saving in this post table and it's going to belong to a board we have the title we have the content we have the id one thing we also need is the status so we are going to have an enum to track all the kinds of statuses we are going to have so we have the open under review planned in progress complete and closed and this is going to kind of map out our roadmap for the posts so if we come to the roadmap you will notice that it just has the planned in progress complete and if a post is under one of these then that's how we are going to use to draw out our roadmap all right so let's add the status field to the post and let's check out our diagram to see the progress you can see we have a board a board belongs to an organization as you can see and now a board has many posts now a post is also going to have votes so let's create a table called votes and each vote is going to have to know what post we voted on the user that voted and also what kind of vote it was upvote or downvote so i'm going to post those fields and what we need is an enum to know if it's an upvote or downvote and finally we are going to save that as the type so the final thing we need is the comments because if you check out the product let's visit one of the posts you can see there are comments under the post so we are going to have a table called comments and this comments should also have replies so first i'm going to have the id and the content fields next i need to track next i need to track the post that this comment belongs to or this comment is referring to and the user that commented and the final piece of the puzzle is tracking if this comment is a reply so we are going to add a comment field and it's going to be nullable and it's going to reference the id on the comment so if a comment has a comment field it means that it belongs to another comment and that's how we are going to have the reply effect so we would load a comment with its own comments all right so let's look at our schema see what we have first we have organizations then we have users then we have a board 
we have posts and we have votes and where did comments go there so yes we have comments so this is a structure that i think can scale at the moment one user is going to have just one organization but in future we can decide to have multiple organizations and this is as well going to scale boards belong to organizations posts belong to boards votes belongs to posts and memberships belong to organizations finally comments belong to posts so this is what i was able to come up with please do not hesitate to share your own database schema below so that i can have a look and we can talk about the advantages and disadvantages of going one way or the other now remember the reason why you spend a lot of time designing your database schema is so that you make sure that it matches exactly the project requirements and you also think of the future and make sure that it's scalable enough to handle any requests that come in all right thank you so much for watching please leave a comment below if you have any questions at all if you also have video suggestions please leave a comment below and i will be glad to see to your suggestions tweet at me if you have anything to tell me and i'm gonna be glad to have a conversation with you all right thank you guys so much for following along and i will see you in the next video